like to welcome you here today for the February 2021 video of the Golden Rosy Cross. And we thought that we could introduce a subject, which is a powerful subject, about the universal light. What is the universal light? What effect can it have on me and you, on the population of a country, the world's population? What is happening today in the world in terms of the insecurity, the fear that we have because of one pandemic and another pandemic? So when we are thinking and talking about the universal light, then this brings us up to another level, to another element of understanding of our own existence. And over the ages, light has been studied and has been discussed. And the discovery that light is sevenfold and composed of the rainbow spectrum of colours was really an important breakthrough. And today we still wonder whether light is composed of individual particles or waves. And we know that experiments in physics indicate that light can be seen in both these ways and can be physically demonstrated. But then we can go one step further and say that with uh, the thinking of our scientists and with the work that every one of us is doing when we're thinking about life and existence is the introduction of quantum physics. And the fact that a particle can be here and can be here at the same time. And that is also the case with light, that there can be darkness and there can be light, and there can be light and there can be darkness at the same time. So how do these interrelate? How do we see the relationship between darkness and light? We don't want to complicate uh, the issue uh, that we have started to discuss uh, today uh, with you, but we would like to give some <clears throat> highlights or elements of how the Golden Rosy Cross sees these elements, how the Gnostics uh, refer to light. And we could say that behind every manifestation of space and time, there is reality and behind duality and the three known dimensions there are other dimensions and here we talk of the fourth dimension not to mention books not to mention films produced on the subject even the fifth dimension but yes a life in the same way that there is the spectrum of light going from one colour to another colour, so also our life is sevenfold. And therefore we can see that behind the material manifestation there is another reality. And that other reality we can refer here to the archetype or the platonic pure form. So we see on the one hand man and the eternal being. We see the microcosm, but also the cosmos and the macrocosm. And if we look to the sun, we see that it has not only its external manifestation, but also has an inner manifestation, which is invisible. So we can talk of the visible sun and the spiritual sun, which is Vulcan. And Vulcan emits also into the world, into the universe of space and time, its spiritual energies and forces. 
and dear friends, we are creatures of the light and we need light to survive. So we cannot live without light. And how do we assimilate light? We assimilate light in the form of vibrations as rays of energy, but also, for example, as vitamins. Without the vitamins in our food, without the light uh, on our bodies, and that's why one talks of these different uh, supplements and so on, of course, we really need our daily light, if not our daily bread. Now, if we talk of these two manifestations, the visible and the invisible, and we talked about the visible sun and the invisible sun, Vulcan, that is the same with the universal light. It shines continually and attracts what is akin uh, to it. And then we could say that the universal light awakens the divine principle in our being. And the Rosy Cross speaks of an atom in our system that is a spark of the spirit. And that spirit spark atom is situated just above the heart. And in fact, if we take our physical body and the other bodies of which the Rosy Cross uh, speaks of the etheric, astral and mental bodies, then that atom is situated in the very centre of our being, in the very centre of the microcosm, which is the invisible true man in all of its or his potential manifestation. Now, we know that as human beings, we function in and with the light through five basic actions. And we'd like to discuss that with you briefly now in this introductory video uh, to our theme, the universal light for this month of February. And the first basic action is breathing. If we stop breathing, we stop living. If an organism like ours cannot breathe, it will die. But we don't only breathe through the lungs, and so therefore through our nose into the lungs, but we also breathe through our skin. We breathe through all the cellular structures uh, within our body. And you know that we only breathe with a very small percentage of our lungs, maybe 5%. So what about the other 95%? What's happening with that? So we have very shallow breathing and we need to be able to learn to breathe deeply, openly, and that breathing deeply and opening will also change the way in which we function. The second aspect is that of eating. And there is that saying, you are what you eat. And then it is left up to every one of us to think about it and to say, yes, in fact, how I eat, where I eat, what I eat is so essential uh, to the functioning of not only our physical body, but also our consciousness, and also those bodies we have just enumerated. So we see, yes, in the complexity of the human being, all these elements and organs are essential, not only to live from A to Z, from A to Z, in terms of the duration of our life, but also how we can use that life to link the visible with the invisible. How can we link ourselves with these other 
dimensions. We've talked about eating, but of course drinking is very important in terms of satisfying our bodily needs. So water is an essential element that replenishes and gives energy and force uh, to our body. And we've mentioned three functions. The fourth function is movement. Yes, we as human beings, as animal human beings, need to have movement. And then maybe you are surprised or not, but the fifth one is resting, is rest. We live in a world of fast food, of fast action, of incredible stress that is affecting every layer of society, not depending on how much income you have, how many children you have, but depending on our state of consciousness. How do we adapt to this world of stress, of fast living? And how can we move into rhythm and harmony? Well, we could say that the way to achieve that rhythm and harmony takes place if we open ourselves, if we truly open ourselves to the light, to that force within, to that principle of which we have spoken. And this is a subject or a theme which is linked to the universal light, and that is soul healing. So how can we move into true soul healing? And then the question is, is not so much about healing, but what is the soul? And we can say that the natural soul is composed of five fluids. The blood, which we know in part because we see it, is visible, because it is not only physical, but it is also etheric. We have the nervous system through our body. We have the hormonal system, which means all that is in terms of our glandular endocrine uh, secretion. We have the spinal column, which we can call the serpent fire system. And then we have also the consciousness. And if we talk of consciousness, you may agree that we are living through and with an ego consciousness, an I consciousness. And here maybe is a secret to the mystery of the universal light. How can we move from a natural soul to a living soul? And of course, you would agree that it is a process of purification. It is a process of purification of those functions, but only through the divine principle, through that spark of the spirit in us. So not trying, not thinking things through, not theorizing, no philosophy, but being able to enter into that very deep, intimate relationship with the spiritual essence which we carry in us as the center of the microcosm. And through that process of purification, but based on and stemming from the divine principle, we can move to spiritual rebirth. And that means a transformation, a transformation of our personality, a transformation of those four bodies we mentioned, of the consciousness, and also of the more and more elevated conscious link with the radiation coming from the divine spark. And this implies transformation and will necessarily imply transfiguration. So when we say that wisdom heals the world, it is not wisdom of the intellect. It is not wisdom of philosophies or dogma or beliefs, 
but it is the wisdom of the heart to begin to think with the heart, to create that unity between head and heart. And then if we heal ourselves, we'll be able to heal others. And we come to a very powerful invocation. And that powerful invocation is, you are the light of the world. So if we introduce through that spiritual principle in our being, light into the world, if we can say into darkness, then the wisdom which is related to that and the transformation which is implicit in it, transfiguration takes place. And then we become like a beacon. We carry a flame of light into the world and obviously linking ourselves with others who are in the same process to create a true beacon that radiates into the world. And that is an enormous, marvellous task, full of joy, full of inner conviction that comes from freedom, the true freedom of the renewed soul. And we look forward to welcoming you at our webinars, also on our Golden Rosy Cross site, where you can find texts, where you can find videos, where you can find podcasts concerning the Golden Rosy Cross and also the path that we have been talking about today. So we look forward to meeting you, to having contact with you uh, in the coming days, in the coming weeks, and that truly we can discover the universal light, the universal light that will take us through that process of purification into be able to say, yes, somewhere that divine principle is also radiating in and through me. And maybe then one can become the light of the world. Thank you and look forward to seeing you soon. Mm -hmm.